Alabama State's 2024 recruiting class is highlighted by two big time players who come over to Montgomery from other teams within the SWAC. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day, every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College to get twenty, or excuse me, just Locked On to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Thank you for tuning in with me today. Is Lovers Day? Happy Valentine's to you. Hope you have a good one. Um, yesterday was Mardi Gras, so you back listening to me. Shout out to you. We had the Super Bowl this week. It's been a fantastic week, and we are on hump day so let's go ahead and get it rolling we'll wrap up today's episode with a look at the haul that clark atlanta is bringing over from allen university in this year's national signing day recruiting class prior to that the absence of zay green yeah really killed my excitement around monday's matchup between UAPB and Jackson State. But let's kick it off with some really big news. We continue our conversation around National Signing Day. It's a week removed, but we'll probably, at least tomorrow, continue this conversation. But this is one of the ones I could have brought up from the jump. Alabama State made a big splash. Matter of fact, they made two big splashes in the form of in-swag transfers. So you have Rico Dozier, who comes over from Arkansas Pine Bluff, and then you have Andrew Body, who's coming over from Texas Southern. I love these type of moves. Obviously, I don't love that Body went there because I wish he would have stayed in Houston with my Tigers, but I love these type of moves from a football mind because I like it when you weaken your opponent. It's like pulling in a free agent from the division. We're weakening somebody we need to beat while also strengthening ourselves. I love this kind of stuff, right? Let's kick it off with body. Let's kick it off with body. These two highlight the class. It's not the full class, obviously, but let's kick it off with body because he plays quarterback and he's the bigger name. This is a player who has been very anticipated. We've been waiting on his ascent for about a year and a half. I do believe that we were going to see it last season. Unfortunately, he only played one game. And when you only play one game, there's no way you can ascend to the heights that people see Andrew Body's ability to ascend to. He's talented. There's no question that Body is a talented quarterback. It's just about him reaching his full form. And will he do that at Alabama State? Time will tell. But this is why everybody's excited. Prior to last season, he was a all swat quarterback, preseason all swat quarterback. This is a guy people have been waiting and they believe he could be that guy. He has that guy potential. And when you bring somebody like that in, you're going to elevate your offense if he can reach even close to his ceiling. But before you even look at the elevation of the offense, and I've looked at just how he fits in Alabama State and all of that prior, I think when it first happened in mid-January, we looked at that and had that conversation. This is what he brings most importantly to Alabama State and that stability at a position that they have not had stability at since Eddie Robinson Jr. has become the coach. You look at 2022, you had D. Davis, you had Miles Crawley. They were going back and forth. Both of them started a good amount of games, played in a good amount of games. Then you go into 2023, you got D. Davis, and then you also got Damon Stewart. 
when I'm just looking at the last two seasons, this has not been what you wanted it to be. Because Davis has started games both seasons, hasn't finished the year. You're looking at Crawley starting in 2022 before he transferred over to Grambling, and we saw the stability that he had at Grambling, but it just wasn't there at Alabama State as far as starting and keeping that position. You look at Damon Stewart. He didn't keep it, and then he transferred. There's just a lack of stability at the quarterback position over the last two seasons. Andrew Body is going to eliminate all of that. Those guys were benched because of performance. Andrew Body will not be. I can guarantee you that. If Andrew Body is benched because of performance, I would be extremely shocked, and it would be one of the biggest surprises of 2024. Now, some people may say, well, he might not get benched due to performance, but he's injury prone. Let's go ahead and dispel that right now. This is my knowledge. This is what I know. Andrew Body missed last year with an injury that overlapped from the pre previous season. Because people might say he didn't finish 2022. He didn't finish 2023. He played in the last game of 2022. Got hurt in that game in the fourth quarter. And his body wasn't right to start off 2023. And that is what led to the medical redshirt. That is an overlapping injury, not repeated injuries. To me, you have to have repeated injuries to be injury prone. So I'm going to say that he is not injury prone. That would be my reply back to you. This is going to be stability through preseason camp, through the regular season, maybe through uh, even postseason play. Who knows? But you'll have one quarterback, which is something you couldn't have said over the last two seasons. Now you look at Rico Dozier because he's not as big of a name as Andrew Body. A quarterback can transform your entire program. He's a linebacker, but he's not just a regular shrug your shoulders linebacker. He's a first team all swag linebacker in 2023. Now, Eddie Robb, as a former player at that same position, I'm sure values it very much. He said, I just had Bubba Adams. I just had Bubba. I need to replace him with another tackling machine. So why not go get the only person in 2023 to have more tackles than Bubba? That's what you got in Rico Dozier. You have a player who flies around the field. So you brought in a preseason all-swag player. You brought in a all-swag first-team linebacker, somebody who will be a big part of your defense, and you've hurt UAPB. You've hurt Texas Southern in the meantime. I, listen, they're not going to get another body, and they're probably not going to get another Dozier. That's just the fact of the matter. And I don't want Dozier to go under the radar. I really don't because he's a player who I've had my eyes on, especially last year, and he was one of the bright spots for the Golden Lions. He was, a, like I said, an all-swipe player, leader in the conference in, in tackles, and he had a lot of solos. I think I think he had the most solos in the in the uh, in the conference as well, him and Isaiah Major, if I'm not mistaken, at 63. This is a player who you now feel comfortable having a stud at linebacker. You now feel comfortable with the middle of your defense having a leader. This is something that I think is going to fly under the radar. It's not going to be overly discussed, but it needs to be because I feel like it'll be extremely impactful. Now, as we push forward, I got something impactful for you. And that's Zay Green, who missed the game between UAPB and Jackson State. And because she was absent, all of my interest and excitement for the game dropped significantly. And we'll look at the injury and what the impact was as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And it doesn't have to be a sporting event. The NFL is over. Obviously, you won't be going anywhere on Sunday, or at least going to the stadium on Sunday. But maybe you want to go to an arena. Maybe you want to go to a basketball game. But like I said, that's not it. Want to go to a play? Want to go to a concert? Want to go to a comedy show? You can get all of those options. On game time. So all you have to do is put in where you live, whether you in, I don't know, Omaha, maybe you out there in New Orleans, maybe you out there in Tallahassee, just put your city in. I don't know why I said Omaha. That was so random. But um, just put your city in because it doesn't matter where you are. Put your city in. And you'll find events that are close to you. And, re and remember to use the code locked on because then you get $20 off. And who doesn't want to save a little bit of money? 
So go ahead and go to Game Time, the best place for last minute ticket deals, and you'll get twenty dollars off when you use the code Locked On. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Making it your first listen of the day and then also for your second listen, go ahead and check out Locked on Sports today, which is the first of its kind 24-7 all day, every day sports network on YouTube. So go ahead and check that out and subscribe today. Zay Green's absence really did sully what was supposed to be a big time matchup between UAPB and Jackson State women's basketball. I was, ex- man, I, when I say I was excited, I mean, I was through the roof. I'm telling you that this is the game that I circled from the start of the season. This is the game that I always wanted to see. You don't always get what you want. Because Zay Green was limping prior to the game. This is a VA Twitter user. Um, it was later reported to be a knee injury. And she missed the game. She didn't go through warmups. So it's like, hey, we don't think she's going to play. And she didn't. And when I tell you that this greatly affects how you view the game, it greatly affects how the game played out. There are so many things. This is not the same game without Zay Green. And I want to say this and I want to orchestrate however long it takes for me to get through this with the utmost respect to all of the other women on UAPB women's basketball, because I do believe that they are talented. Right. But this ain't the same team. I said it last time when we were talking about it on Monday. There's many people who maybe weren't ready to circle the UAPB game preseason because they were looking at the record. Well, that record happened without Zay Green. And when you have a superstar, this is a swag player of the year type of lady. When you have somebody of her caliber on your team, removing her from the equation changes so much that you can't just say, oh, well, that's just one player gone. That's not just one player gone. She does too much for that offense. When you look at the large amount of hype that I had around this game, it was Jackson State's defense versus Jackson, or excuse me, versus UAPB's offense. When you look at a large amount of the excitement that I have for this game, it was about Zay Green and her superstardom going against the top defense in the SWAC. When you look at the large amount of hype that I had for this game, it was about what can Zay Green do scoring, facilitating, playing defense, against Jackson State. It was an immovable force, a unit versus a star player-led team. It was not one player. This is not Zay Green doing it by herself. This is a star player-led team. That's not Jackson State. Jackson State is more so a unit. I brought up the rim protector, but for the most part, I focused on JSU, the team. But when you see I'm discussing UAPB, that's when I get more into individuals. And the individual that I focused on the most was Zay Green. That's no disrespect to Pete. That's no disrespect to Peck, who ended up playing this game, or excuse me, to Beck and Pete. There's no disrespect to them. But everybody knows when Zay Green was listed out, we're like, ah, the same what we signed up for. And I hate to sound hyperbolic, and I don't think that this does, but this feels very similar to when a fan, oh, I I traveled all this way to watch fill-in-the-blank star player, and then they don't play. That person is extremely disappointed. Now, to be clear, Zay Green Green didn't just sit. Zay Green didn't say, I don't feel like playing today. They didn't say we're going to rest her. She's injured. She had a knee injury. But the impact is the same for me. Well, I'm significantly less excited. And it's not just her scoring ability. Um, Shaq said this about a year and a half. I think it might have been two years ago. A star is able to impact the game in multiple ways. Against Mississippi Valley State, her shot wasn't falling. She couldn't score, right? She only shot like five shots, but she only had two points in that game. She responded with double-digit rebounds three steals, and a pair of blocks. So that's how you impact the game in other ways. When you remove her from the equation, when you remove the best shooting percentage in the conference from a team that is an elite defensive team, a team that keeps everybody shooting under 40%, yeah, you're going to have this conversation or you're going to have an alteration of what you expect. I believe that taking down Jackson State 
was going to be extremely difficult. We all know that. I don't even say I believe. Taking down Jackson State was going to be extremely hard to do with Zay Green on your side. No Zay Green, it becomes extremely doubtful. That's it. It, that's what superstars do. Superstars change games. So when you remove a superstar, that's just what you're going to get. And you end up having Jackson State winning by 16. Uh, Andriana Avent had 20. Bowler had 18. When you look at Beck, she led UAPB with 14. I, I want to see these two teams show down again. I want to see Zay Green in the game. That's what we signed up for. That's what we were excited for. And I'm quite disappointed that we weren't able to get it. But like I said, can't always get everything you want. But then again, this is something we need. Uh, we need it. We need it. But one thing that you need to look at is Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta has pulled in a whopping 10 players from Allen University. And it's not a coincidence that that's where their new head coach stems from. But there's one in particular, one player in particular, that is the biggest impact. And we'll reveal that as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. I've seen a tweet today that said there's not 25 players better in the NBA than Wimby, and this is as bad as he's going to be. Wimby knocked down, I think he had a triple-double in less than 30 minutes two nights ago. I was just talking about him on yesterday. I recorded yesterday's podcast super early, and then he had a great game that night. You need to put some money on Wimby. You need to put some money on Zion. You need to put some money on Anthony Edwards. Put some money on the old dogs like AD. Nah, don't put no money on AD. I, I couldn't help it. Put some money on Bron Bron. Put some money on Steph. These are players. Put some money on Shea Gilders Alexander. That's the guy I keep forgetting to mention. But it's NBA time now. So go on FanDuel and look at those individual players. Look at the teams that they play for. Put some money down. And if you put down a $5 bet and you're new to FanDuel, and you win, you get $150 back in bonus bets. So that's only if you're new to FanDuel. You get $150 back in bonus bets if a $5 bet wins. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. As wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three and i thank you two times for that thank you thank you clark has pulled in 10 players from allen university to their new head coach's former school and yesterday i looked at chinis berry's recruiting class his first recruiting class at south carolina state and he brought in 10 players from his former college benedict college and I was stunned. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. Despite it happening again, despite me talking about it again, I will continue to be stunned for a long time because this is not the norm. This is not the regular. I understand that when coaches leave colleges, especially when head coaches go to be head coaches somewhere else, a lot of times you'll get some players who follow. When old boy from, from Washington went to Alabama, some Washington players came over from Alabama. But I doubt it was 10 of them. 10 just feels like a very high number. So until I continue to see the 10s, the 8s, the 11s, until I start seeing numbers like this become regular to me, I'm going to continue to act like this is irregular. And it's probably going to take about three more times. I got to see it at least five times in this year, next year. So, or in the next three years, right? Five times, including these two right here over the next three years. I, I just don't think this is normal. But this this number, this 10 right here, it's going to be a lesser story, but it might actually be more impactful. The reason it's going to be a lesser story is all of the context that goes around it. First and foremost, Chinis Berry to South Carolina State is a move that has been anticipated for about a year, maybe a little bit more. At least, and I'm saying at least, and I think it was prior to this, but at least since Chennis Berry finished his first undefeated season at Benedict College. And I feel like it really was halfway through that people started having this conversation. They wanted him to take over for Buddy Pugh whenever Buddy retired. And this was before Buddy even said he was retiring. Before Coach Pugh said he was retiring, people already wanted Chennis Berry to be the next head coach of South Carolina State. I think I've even seen people say, man, Buddy needs to go ahead and retire. We're going to miss out on Chennis. This was a move that people was like, yeah, it's a foregone conclusion. We're just waiting for ink to dry. That's the kind, that's the kind of move 
that we're walking into. Then you also got to look at the fact that Barry had back-to-back undefeated seasons in the SIAC. This is very important. The context around Chinnis Barry to South Carolina State and South Carolina State has been a really productive team over the last couple of years, not that far removed from a national championship. All of these factors are important because all of these factors go into why people were already looking at South Carolina State, already looking at Chinnis Barry prior to National Signing Day even happening we were looking to see what they were going to do you can't say all of those things about clark atlanta teddy keaton is the new head coach but you can't say all of those things about barry that you can say about keaton and that's just that's just facts of it all and also it's not a a vertical move it's a lateral move keaton went from albany state or no not albany state allen to clark they're both siac conference members or SIAC. I was just talking to Bo Carter about this, about how people say the whole acronym and they say conference at the end. But they're both members of the same conference, the SIAC. But those all, all those things, all of those factors come into play. But don't get it twisted. It may not draw the same amount of headlines. It might not drum up the same amount of chatter. But these transfers, these 10 transfers from Allen University to Clark Atlanta might arguably be more impactful than the 10 transfers from Benedict College to South Carolina State. The reason I say that is, number one, you got the the, the conference player of the year. David Wright, a quarterback, and we were just talking about Andrew Body to start off the year. A quarterback can completely turn around your team. So when you bring in the best quarterback in the conference, the guy who was just basically the conference MVP, I believe that it's easy to say that Clark will turn around. And, I mean, it's not hard. They were 0-10 last year. They didn't win a game. So, of course, they're going to turn. You better improve. If Clark Atlanta doesn't improve from a record-wise than what they were last year, we need to have some serious conversations. We need to have some serious conversations, almost to the point where if they go 0-10 again, it might be one and done. Like, uh, I'm, I'm always for firing a coach when they don't win a game. I went up on my radio show. Was it my radio show? No, I think it was my podcast at the time. At Texas Southern. I went up there and said, fire Clarence McKinney the first year because he didn't win a game. That scarred my mentality on McKinney for the foreseeable future. Just going to be honest with you, that scarred my mentality on him for the foreseeable future because he didn't win a game. I'm I'm for that. You ain't going to hear me say, nah, give him another year. Screw that. You should have won a game at least. But anyway, David Wright is the quarterback. And when you look at Keaton, He was the head coach, and he was the quarterback's coach. He was a pivotal piece in Wright's development. So it's no shocker that David Wright is going to follow him to Clark University, Clark Atlanta, right? Now, here's my thing. David Wright is changing schools. He's going from Allen to Clark Atlanta, but that's about the only thing that's changing. They say continuity is a quarterback's best friend because it allows those results to stay even and even inclined. But here's my thing, or not but, more so, and here's my thing. If continuity is a quarterback's best friend and the just having the same base allows him to improve every year or at least not drop off, I don't think that he loses that continuity. Wright doesn't lose that continuity by going from Allen to Clark Atlanta. He's first off, when you're looking at David Wright, Clark Atlanta is bringing in the SIAC Conference Player of the Year. I did it again. Oh, my gosh. This is twice. I'm I'm going to clip this up and and show it to him. But Clark Atlanta is bringing in the SIAC Player of the Year. But they're not having a lot of things change around him. He's keeping his head coach. He's keeping one of his best offensive linemen, who was an all-conference player as a freshman. You're bringing in his best receiver, the guy who had the most yards per game for him. This is a lot of things, coach, protection, weapons. That's enough to say I'm going to get a very similar result from David Wright because you're staying in the scheme and you're staying with some of your key things. You need to be protected and you need people to throw to. So when I say that the transfers could be more impactful, first off, you look at where Clark is trying to climb from. So they're, they're, South Carolina State didn't, they weren't a championship contender, but they were a solid team. 
Clark Atlanta didn't win a game. They have more room for growth. You're bringing in a quarterback. That position alone a lot of times can transform your hopes and transform your program, and you're bringing over an offensive lineman from there. You're bringing over a weapon from there, and you're bringing over the coach. That's enough continuity to feel like I'm going to get the performance that could transform Clark Atlanta. Now, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Go ahead and enjoy your lover's day. Maybe you wind it down. Maybe you check me out on the 15th. That's okay. I love you too. Now, that being said, I'm about to pre-record my 15th because I want to enjoy my lover's day. So without further ado, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.